just as merely a suggestion because it's something that can be adjusted because it's not baked into the photograph. It's just metadata telling it this is the white balance to use. And if there's one compelling reason, and only one compelling reason to use raw files, even though there's millions, this is it right here. You get a JPEG and your white balance is off, you can fix it, but you get a lot of noise and you lose a lot of quality. In a raw file, I can fix the white balance so quickly without losing any quality in my photograph. So I could go over here, I could change the setting, like right now it's saying as shot. Look at this. The JPEG doesn't give you that information. Here's all the different settings, the same as the ones on my camera. And I can say, well, you know, hey, what if I try something different, like, uh, you know, I don't know. Under the bridge. Under the bridge, yeah, I'm looking for that one. So let's say tungsten. And, you know, that cleaned it up a little bit. It's not perfect, but what I can do is I grab my little white balance tool here, find an area that should be white, click on it, and bam. Cleans up the white balance. Now, what you do not want to do, see I've got all these other photos here, Let me, and this is how you make the thumbnails bigger here, you just drag it up like that. So, what you don't want to do is go in and start adjusting these by themselves. You want to make sure that the settings are identical across all of them, because when I stitch as, as a panorama, I want them all to match. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the other ones by hitting the shift key, grab the end, and you'll notice that this one here, is four images selected, but this one is more selected. See how it's wider than the other ones? Mm -hmm. So that, the settings are going to be taken off the most selected one and handed on to the other ones. So what I'm going to do is hit the little button that says sync. Notice white balance is on. And so the only thing's on a white balance and calibration. If everything else is on, just choose check none. And then choose white balance. And I'll choose calibration. Even though I'm not really changing the calibration, but you don't even have to have that on. And then I hit synchronize. And notice that they all update. So now what I've done is I've got all of those have got exactly the same white balance. That's the only thing I've changed. And now I'm going to choose photo. And I'm going to choose editing. And then I want to choose the option in Photoshop to merge to a panorama in Photoshop. So I'm going to select that. And now this is going to take probably a little while because these are big files. And there's a lot of stuff that's going to go on. So we've got all the different options here. And... Um, if I was doing a, a training on panoramic photography, I'd go through all these, but I'm not going to bother. I'm just going to use auto and click OK. And, but notice down here, we've got options here, blend images together, vignette removal. Usually I would turn that on um, because it will get rid of any of the lens vignetting. Mm. I forget what lens I used there. It's probably not too bad, but I have that. How many Canon shooters are there here? A few Canon shooters. Um, so I, I can't talk about Nikons because I don't own a Nikon, so I don't know much about them. But I do know that with the Canon, the 2470, the, the 28, great lens, beautiful piece of glass, but it vignettes really, really badly around the edges. So if I was using that lens, I would turn on vignette removal because it gets dark around the edges. But for the sake of time and speed, I'm not. I'm just going to click OK and let it merge together. It takes a little longer when you use a vignette and also the distortion. I'm not even going to bother about the distortion and you'll see why. So what it's doing is it's putting it together. So let, let me ask you a question. Here's a quiz. And I'm... Um, I'm, I'm going to, do you mind if I take one of these prizes and give a prize away? Okay, I'm going to do this, and here's what's going to happen. I'm going to ask a question, so in, so in case you don't cheat, the first person to put their hand up with the right answer gets this disc. So, if you put your hand up and you don't know the answer, you're going to buy this off me. Right? <laughs> uh, so, so, no raising your hand up before I ask the question. Okay, so what is the most important thing in panoramic photography? Parallax, exactly. Good man. Good man. Here, HDR and Photoshop. Exactly. So, um, see, I, I think it would take time because it's taking time for that to get together. Okay, there's two things you really need to know. One is about a 30% overlap, and the pictures works really well. The other thing is parallax. Is In this case, it doesn't matter because everything was pretty much on the same plane. But a lot of the time when you do panoramic photography, you want to rotate the camera. There's a point that's called the, the, the nodal point, which is where, you know, if you close one eye, put your finger in front of your face, close one eye, then close the other one. Not everyone has that skill. But. <laughs> and you'll notice that it changes in relation to the background. And that's known as parallax. But if you rotate, there's a point on the camera where, there's, where you can actually rotate on that lens, usually just in front of the sensor. 
And at that point, when you rotate it there, you don't get any parallax, you don't get any movement. So if you have a panoramic head, you adjust your camera back and forwards so you can rotate it and, and create your panoramas. But really, that was just a time filler so I could let it merge. So here we go. You can see little cracks on there, but they're not really there. Um, if we zoom in, you can see this. Let's go up to 100%, and we'll zoom right in. And this is a great time to use another feature. It's um, called bird's eye view. If I hit the H key, and I move this thing around, and I release it, will zoom right in there. This is a GPU feature. So we can zoom in at 100%. See that? We can look at our photograph, and you know, where's the seams? Here? But if you look at it, the seams are not really there. So what it's done is it's merged all of these together um, really nicely, and it's created little masks and stuff on there. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to hit the Control e the Command-E on Mac, and I'm just going to merge it together into one layer. The reason I want to do that is because